Well, I think it is time that we can start. Some of you have already had the chance to look at this picture while we were waiting for some more people to come in. What do you make of it? What do you see? Flamey man with an arm. Flamey man with an, an arm. Antiphone. Pardon me? An antiphone. What is that? It's a plant that uses another plant or inanimate object as support. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I.e. Ivy. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, I think this one's actually wine and not Ivy. It's a, a vine, is it? That's one. Mm -hmm. Any other ideas? Uh, yeah, it's a woman dancing. That was my first reaction, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Why did you come up with that? <laughs> Why did you come up with that one? I can see her. She's doing this. Mm -hmm. Why is a woman? Men don't do that. Andrew, why did you come up with your explanation? Because I didn't see the dress clearly, so clearly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's just this little ballet dress. <laughs> right, here the ballet dress or the knee brace could be there. Yeah. yeah. Do you see it now, sir? Well, I see somebody on the march. That's another possibility. He's saluting. Yeah. yeah. Just for a talk. I still see a plant, I have to say. <laughs> Just a lot of patterns that you have consumed early on that just let you see what's already there and not the creative part around it. I also see a house, so it's a bit too obvious, I suppose. Oh, it's a house. I see windows. It's an unusual house. It's in Luxembourgish house, so uh, not really okay. known to Australians okay. or um, Southern Hemisphere people. Well, I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was a Belgian house, but. No, not far. So why did I actually just show you the house and not the title of my presentation? Because I hope what you've seen now already is a little bit that you reflected upon, something that you had thought about. And that is a process that you're doing all the time when you're working with portfolios. We actually reflect upon our practices and on our actions that we do every day on a constant basis. Only that way can we avoid pitfalls or that way do we learn something new. And when we use portfolios for that, we just, I think, formalize that process in, in a certain way because we have to write it down or we have to make an audio recording or we do a video recording or an installation or anything just so that we have that reflection process going with an artifact or an evidence of learning. And what I'd like to do now in the next about 25 minutes is to acquaint you with an e-portfolio system, an electronic e-portfolio system that can help you in that reflection process, which can assist you in um, learning together with your students, but also using it for professional development. And the software that I'm talking about, you might have already seen it on my shirt, it's um, Mahara. It's a software that started in New Zealand and it came out of a research fund by the New Zealand government and also two big universities, Massey and Victoria, New Zealand, and started around um, 2006. It is an open source project that has now followers around the world. So it's not only um, maintained in New Zealand, but also by developers in the European Union, in Japan, also by some in the States. And Mahara actually means to think in Māori. And what you can do in that ePortfolio system is that you can, of course, create content. It's an online system, nobody has to install anything. So what you do, you create content, for example, by using blogs and also by just writing regular small text into boxes and putting that online. In the next step, you can also, of course, collect content because not everything is um, textual, but you also have videos or images or audio recordings, and you cannot produce those in the ePortfolio system, but you need other tools for it. And therefore, we need to be able to actually put these tools, um, put these recordings in there so you can always upload content. 
But of course, since we are all 21st century learners and we learn every day something new and also use social media for our learning, it's not just that you can create and collect content, but in a lot of ways you can also just aggregate content. Because you might, use a, uh, might have uploaded a video to YouTube or Vimeo, or you use a podcasting service, use a screencasting service, your students create presentations on Prezi or upload their presentations to SlideShare and use all these various tools, you should still be able to make them accessible from within your ePortfolio system so that everything is in one place and the student doesn't have to send you around the internet via links, but you just need to look at one page basically and have everything there that you need in order to either assess the student or provide them feedback on their learning progress and their learning journey. And of course, once the entire evidence is available in the ePortfolio system, the biggest part of the portfolio process is the actual reflection. So that is also supported by the system and um, we encourage students to use either the built-in blocks for that or they can also again upload files with their reflections in audio or video format. So once they've collected all these artifacts and the reflections, they can then organize their content into distinct portfolios. So they don't just have one portfolio, but they can create multiple portfolios. Um, they can have a portfolio for um, the politics class they are taking or that um, strand in their studies. And they can also have a, a portfolio just for their history classes. And then another portfolio um, for their extracurricular activities. And that really depends on how the students wants to or want to organize that. And you as lecturers can also do the same thing. You can create your own portfolio on it. It's not just for students. As soon as somebody has an account on it, you can go with it as well. And you can use it as students do just for your professional development, for keeping track of your teaching achievements, <coughs> of your awards, of the conference presentations you did, of the papers you've written, and reflect on all of these. Since it's a portfolio software, and a portfolio you want to show off to other people and not just keep to yourself, of course you can also present all your content. And um, Mahara was built as presentation portfolio but also as process oriented portfolio, so it's not extremely widely used as assessment portfolio simply because you can't put a rubric in there and um, have students fill in the rubric, but you have to find some base around. There are um, universities and also schools around that do use Mahara for assessment purposes. Some also connect it together with Moodle, a learning management system, and um, try to integrate these two. And next to the presentation aspect is also that you want to share certain resources with others. So the learner can actually always decide who shall have access to which part of their portfolio. So it's not like on a regular uh, website that um, anybody or nobody has, or everybody or nobody has access to it, but the student decides it for each individual portfolio page or for each por collection of pages. So they can say, that's only the area that my teacher of history has access to, and that area only my economics teacher can view. And then that part over there, that's for my internship application to somebody who's not even connected to the university, but to whom I want to apply for a job. So they can also go outside of that um, password protected area of the ePortfolio system. And since we are also in the age of uh, collaboration, that's what the students can do too. Um, they cannot just only give each other feedback on their own portfolios, but they can also collaborate together in groups. They can use groups, they can use groups to create a group portfolio, to create simple web pages together, to share files with each other, and also to discuss all these things in a group setting. And last but not least, um, they can also do a little bit of networking, not as extensive as on Facebook, but they can send each other messages. There is the possibility to have a wall and they can also see their interactions together. Now, how does it actually look like when you've created a portfolio page or when you used uh, the group functionality? 
Well, here's an example from a high school, uh, Carmel High in the United States. That's a group project done by high school students, and they researched the uh, a literary piece of work and put all their research efforts and their findings into their portfolio pages, and they created that page together as a group. But that it's not just this one page, they are also um, five more other pages belonging to that so that they can actually present their entire project online without having to find a different tool where they can do that. And they make this one um, publicly available to anybody in the world. Similar to this project here, that's an individual project also from a student from the same high school. And there you can see that this person worked more with images, also has navi a navigation bar going through several um, pages, and they reflect upon what they found for their project. Closer to the university side of things, um, that is a project in a um, teacher education system, our teacher education program. And what you can see here is also that this lecturer actually incorporated Digo social bookmarking and annotation with the Mahara ePortfolio system. Though you can give feedback on each individual page in Mahara, it is not possible at the moment to give feedback just to a certain section in it. And so this um, instructor coupled it with the social bookmarking tool that they were using already in, in the classroom anyway to give feedback. So that feedback is not stored in Mahara itself, but as soon as somebody has Digo installed on their, in their browser, they can actually see the feedback. So the feedback, again, is also publicly accessible to anybody who views that page. Since we talked a little bit about our, the social networking aspect, Mahara also offers that students and also teachers have profile pages which are always open to anybody who has access to the system. And this student here is um, a high school student and she works with a lot of images, not so much text and also a video. In contrast to an academic, Samantha from Solent University, who publishes her CV in her profile to make others um, to let others know what she's doing and where, where she's coming from and um, provide more insight on her journey in regard to e-learning. So these were examples of um, already ready uh, of um, portfolio pages and profile pages that individuals created on their own, where there was no structure provided. But of course, especially when you're in an assessment setting or in a setting where you want to scaffold the use of portfolios more since your institution has never used it, never done it before, and it is very difficult for students to get started with it, you can also use templates. And you can create any ty uh, type of template that can then be copied to an individual's portfolio. Here we have a template um, from Mark Osborne, who's a teacher at a high school in New Zealand at Albany Senior High School, and they actually mandate the use of portfolios for their staff, not yet for their students, but for all their teachers. And that's why he created a template so that his, t uh, his fellow colleagues could actually fill it in and get started quickly in an appraisal process and um, having some criteria already there on which they are going to be assessed. But teachers don't just use it for um, for themselves, for um, professional development purposes. Uh, the templates can also be used by teachers to give their students an idea of how they shall actually structure their portfolio work. In this case, again, from one of our New Zealand installations, my portfolio, which basically is a national, nationwide portfolio service for all school students. And um, there the teacher provided a template on the level one numeracy standard because New Zealand education is very standard based and it's very nitty gritty detailed of what is being to be presented in a standard and the portfolio software can lend itself to that so that the students can actually provide the evidence that they've uh, accomplished the standard. And so what the student can then do is they take that page from the teacher and modify it to their own needs. 
As you can see here, I only have two columns in contrast to the three that were there before. And I just took out the other columns because in this, on this page I just want to focus on one of the standards because I have so much evidence there that I need to present that it would be too much if I wanted to work on all the standards. And I can easily put in a YouTube video without downloading it. I just link to it and like on other web services it is just displayed. And it's very easy to put any content in it because when you have the edit screen, you just click on an icon, drag it down here, and then you can provide the information or you choose from the content that already exists in Mahara in your own account and choose and decide what you want to make visible. Can I ask a question? Is it available oh, sure. in other languages? Yes, it is available in other languages. Um, currently, most up-to-date are German, not because I translated it. We have a very good translator. Um, Spanish, French, Japanese. The Japanese translation is very good and always very up to date. Um, Dutch is also pretty good. We are currently working on a Maori translation. And um, there are also several other translations available, but depending on how much time the translators spend on it, since it's an open source project, it's a community project, nobody forces them, um, they are not necessarily uh, translations of every terms in it. No, but um, there's one person working on that. At least he said so in the forums a couple of weeks ago. And then if it is in a particular language, can you upload and incorporate other, more than one language into the Mahara? Yes. Um, the translation of the language um, is, uh, only goes for what you see here in the text. It's not concerned with the text you actually write. So even though you might use the English, uh, English translation, you can still write in Chinese or in Arabic or in Udo or in Hindi, uh, in Sanskrit. It does not matter because the, um, the editor supports any language. It is just the interface that is translated. It's just that um, in, in my, um, I should just explain, I work for Abu Dhabi Education Council and one of the issues that we have with a lot of our digital um, although we're just moving into this field in, in the digital software and so on, is that um, Arabic reads from right to left yep. and English from left to right. And yet when you, when you get into the um, language, for example, in mathematics, the equations and, and, uh, and the numerals read left to right. And in my chemistry equations, symbol equations, read left to right, whereas the word equations read right to left. Mm -hmm. And the big issue that we're having is when you intersperse the, this with English and uh, in, the, um, in, the, in the, whatever software you're using, and it makes it very, very difficult sometimes. It's, you know, if you've got an Arabic keyboard, an English keyboard, then you put the equation editor in, all that kind of stuff. So I, I'm just intrigued as to how that can handle that. So, I haven't tried it out. We have not received too much feedback on problems with left to right and right to left languages and, and mixing them. Um, I just know that um, there has been interest currently from Arabic countries about using Mahara in probably for education purposes because I've seen a couple of forum messages in the community forums, but um, they have not touched upon um, yeah, things like that of mixing them into the each other. other. The other issue we all have to be aware of that is that, of course, they've got um, certain sites and areas the students in, in the UAE where I am are not allowed to visit. So you can't, for example, click on to some aspects of YouTube or Flickr and things like that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's a bit of an issue. But, um, yeah, but that's not an issue that any software can solve. No, 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 no. Mm. no I know. Unfortunately not. No, I know, but it's, but it's just that when we, if we were to, to use this, somebody somewhere within the system will just have to accept that the students are going to load up or have reference to areas that somebody's not too happy with. But, but it wouldn't work, though, sorry, just to it wouldn't work because it's, it's, if you block it down in the network people, right, right. See, this won't show. Then okay, so they wouldn't be able to put it in there? Well, no, they'll, 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 they'll put some link in there, right? Yeah, and that's all fine, but it just won't work. Like, because it's actually, going away to YouTube and saying, please show this. It's not Mahara in the background, like downloading the image and right. downloading the video and then like serving it to you. Yeah. 
it's it's all a client level, so it, it, might, it just won't work. And, and and the use case about what it should show you, I mean, you have to decide. I mean, you could probably get smart and say it could probably detect if it can see it or not. It should show you, you know, you can't see this or whatever. But if, if they can't just click on a link and use it to watch it, then it won't work in this. Being well, again, and certain well, things course, might course, actually course, also be blocked anyway. Students that get around it by using VPNs and all that kind of stuff as well. well yeah, I mean, that's 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 it's a stupid uh, setup they got there, but nevertheless. You had a question, sir. Uh, well, are any of the uh, individual portfolios available for other people to use? In in which sense do you mean? Well, uh, to to look at or? Uh, you know, you said they they were created by some of the teachers, but are they available for other people around the world to use, or just for the students? Um, that really depends on the teachers, if yeah. they make it accessible to anybody online or not. So the examples yeah. from the high school that I showed to you, right. they are openly available. So anybody right. can look at these examples. I can show you a lot of other very good, uh, good pages and portfolios, simply because I don't have the access right to them. Mm -hmm. And that is the thing with portfolio software. Um, if they don't make it available to you, you can't see them. Now, where... Where, what computer is all this being put on? A computer in New Zealand? I'm coming to that in okay. a second. Uh, I just have ahead. I just have one more slide. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Mahar is an e-portfolio system, and a lot of times you still, even though uh, Brian Corbett just said, don't use a learning management system anymore, you use everything in the cloud and Facebook and Twitter and all these things. But a lot of times um, universities and schools still have learning management systems to provide their course content, to have structured discussions with students. And since Mahara has, has close relations to Moodle, because some Moodle developers became Mahara developers, it also shares a nice code base. They are both open source projects, so close to each other. And therefore, they also form a nice bond. Um, by be, uh, It's possible that you share the same login information without having to set up an identity provider service. And um, you can also now with Moodle to exchange content it itself. So you can move one of your forum posts from Moodle 2 directly into your portfolio software without having to copy and paste, but it just shows up as a blog post. And so this connection is actually called Mahoodle. So if you ever come across it, it's not a new learning management system or something strange. It's just a combination of Mahara and Moodle. And now to your questions about where does Mahara actually sit? Well, that depends entirely on you because it is open source software. We, as a company that uh, does development work on Mahara, does not provide a server where anybody can use it or anybody can have their own portfolio on it. But the software can be installed by any university, by any school, by anybody himself or herself on a server, on an online server. It doesn't really make too much sense to have a server just for yourself because you don't have all the nice, can't really use the nice collaboration features of getting feedback from others, collaborating, using groups. So usually it's actually institutions that install it. Or alternatively, of course, you could have it hosted by somebody else if you don't have space on your university server. So there's no license fee attached to that. You can just grab the code and run with it. You don't have to buy it for three years, five years, or 10 years. You can use it, you can trial it, and um, then either continue using it or not. Mark? Christina, thanks. I just wanted to address some of the, the kind of issues you were getting from people about mm -hmm. these kind of fears. I'm from Dubai Mental College. We, we ran uh, Mahara three years ago at our college, so to my colleague from Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. um, we had it installed on our college server and we allowed the ACT firewalls to deal with the kind of concerns he's worried about. So in, t in terms of the students' work, it was nice and secure on our own server, because that's where we run Mahara from, and it has to link to inappropriate videos that's being blocked by the firewalls that are the institutional level. So it's a non-issue. <coughs> Thank you for that addition, Mark. So how many people are actually using it? Well, I can't really tell you that. 
We only know of about 240 installations because these are the installations that report back that say I want to be registered, but there are many, many others around that just don't click on the register button. Therefore, I can also just assume that it's probably going to be more than 240,000 accounts that exist on any Mahara anywhere in the world. So these are just the ones that we know of. That does not mean that all 240,000 people connect to Mahara each day and use it as portfolio software. Sometimes schools sign up all their students, so everyone has an account, but maybe only 10% use it. So with, like with any other open source software, you just don't have these measurements that you get with proprietary software. But you get all the advantages of um, being in the open, have, uh, giving access to a software that students could also use after their studies. Because there are certain hosters around that offer free hosting. Some universities even offer um, hosting of portfolios beyond graduation. For example, Plymouth State University. They have 250 megabytes of space for alumni to continue using their portfolio. But what you can also do with Mahara is that you export your portfolio. So you can export it as HTML website to put on a CD or DVD for archiving purposes or to send it off to somebody. Or you can export it in an XML format in a standard leap to a format and import it back into another Mahara installation. Because for example, New Zealand school students can use myportfolio.school.nz and there exists also myportfolio.ac.nz for the university sector. And so when kids leave school, they could take their Mahara, their My Portfolio portfolio, and ask an administrator on the .ac site to import it so that they can just take off and continue where they left in school and they don't have to recreate their entire portfolio from scratch. So that's the nice thing about open source software because it, often also, it, it uses open standards. It um, can be exported, you always have access to the code, you can make customizations, you can add things to it if you can program, you can improve it, you can put an Arabic language file in there, which you can share with the entire community or just keep for yourself. You can make any types of adjustments. And that is basically it, what I wanted to tell you about Mahara. You can keep in touch with me if you have any questions, please just email me. Or you can also go to the community website at mahara.org, create an account, get involved in the discussions, or just access the demo site that is available at demo.mahara.org to give it a try and see um, where it can take you. Are there any other questions or comments? Yes, please. Two questions for you. Yeah. First of all, because it's open source software, I'm assuming um, there are other people out there working on Mahara in their own spare time. What's the developer community like? Um, at the moment, it's still fairly small, but we do have committed developers, not just from Catalyst in Wellington and New Zealand and in the UK, but also from another Mahara partner. So there's basically two departments that um, could, um, give back to the community most. There are many other partners who do who provide hosting and training and also consulting and uh, design things. But we also have an, uh, a Slovenian developer who just develops plugins. And as far as I know, he does that on his spare time. There's also a Spanish developer who um, does regular development work, but mainly also customizations. And of course, there are uh, a number of developers out there that never feed back to the community, that take core Mahara and make their own social networking site out of it. But we never hear from them until they run into a problem in the code and ask in the community if somebody can help them. Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of leads into my second question, which mm -hmm. is what is the community like when it comes to helping the same institution resolve an issue? That usually depends a bit on the amount of work involved. So what you could do as institution, you can ask in the community forums and then anybody could answer, but there, nobody is forced to answer. If you want to have direct help with your problem and quickly, then you can contact any of the developing partners and engage them in a contract. Um, in in uh, America, in higher education, uh, general education, what this, this 
fellow was mentioning, uh, the knowledge, skills, and values that all students, regardless of what you major is, need for the 21st century. And one of the big things is uh, the evaluation or uh, uh, seeing if students are actually getting it or not by mm -hmm. their senior year. And one of the ways, there are many ways to evaluate, to assess it, but one of them is to uh, have them develop uh, one of these things, have each student do it uh, mm -hmm. to demonstrate mm -hmm. that they have uh, uh, learned or created or whatever it's uh, mm -hmm. the general education. This, uh, so this may be a big thing in America. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are American universities using it. And um, what you can do nicely, and what we also did at the university in Luxembourg, where, where I started from using Mahara, is uh, that we also used it for competency, or for showing evidence that right. students have reached a certain level in, in a competency standard. And the portfol or portfolios in general are very well suited for that because you need to provide this evidence. You can't just say I have a mark, um, I've yeah, right, got a GPA of 4.1, but you really need the learning evidence. You need to show what you actually did. And therefore, it's been adapted for competencies. Um, it is also used, um, for example, by a hairdressing co or a college where hairdressing is a subject, because also they need to demonstrate something. Oh. They need to show that they don't cut into the head or don't take off too much or do the colorization correct. And so it's used cool. in, in professions and not just in cool. higher education, but also further education. It's used for CV building. Um, the career portfolio Manitoba is built on Mahara because you have a um, resume tool in it that can be used on uh, where you can create your resume to send off to an employee. You can create as many resumes as you wish. <laughs>